Good morning to everybody tuning in on the sixth Sunday of Easter and welcome to this service from Newport Pagnell. And the lesson reader today is Beth Mackay and the interceder is Kimani Nichols and the preacher is myself. So let's hear the reading for today. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. <coughs> if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, Jesus talks in that reading about calling us his friends. And friendship might mean all sorts of things to all sorts of people. I learned many moons ago that you can often tell what somebody is like by the sort of company that they keep. So what sort of human friendships are there. I expect you've come across all of these types of friends. Well, I sat and had a think about this. First, there's the, the blood sucker. Have you heard of the blood sucker? The one that drains you of energy and the will to live. Have you ever met anyone like that? They're full of what's going on in their life, but rarely ask you about yours. And if you say, how are you to them, you better set your clock because you'll be there for half an hour. Here, you know those sort of people? And they leave you feeling exhausted and hollow. Then, of course, there's the gold digger, isn't there? The one who's a friend just because of your status or your wealth in life. And you get the sort of feeling that they wouldn't really be interested in you if you weren't a sort of celebrity or wealthy. It's amazing to see how some about whom there's nothing attractive, but who have money and status, seem to attract the gold digger. Then of course there's the fair weather friend. Good company, perhaps got a great sense of humour. They seem to show an interest in you, but when you face hard times, they melt away. They don't want to be associated with someone who's a bit of a wreck. Not good for their esteem. They're the sort of people who hunt with the hounds, but run with the rabbits. Maybe you've met this next sort of friend, the one I call the puppet master friend. The person who just wants somebody to control. 
to tell you what to think or do or be. And the moment you stand up to them, they get very stroppy and you're instantly off their Christmas card list. <laughs> Met anyone like that? A few nods going around there. Then, of course, there is the person who wants to be your friend, but you don't really want that. <laughs> a bit like if you're chased romantically by somebody that you don't want, you don't fancy, or vice versa. Then there's what I call the friend who's a hoover, the vacuum cleaner, the hoover. Someone who possessively wants you only for themselves and no one else is allowed to have a meaningful relationship with you. This can happen in family life, can't it, as well? I know of many who, once married, marry a partner who doesn't want anything to do with their spouse's family or friends. You ever had that? They only associate with their family roots, but cut yours out. This can happen in lots of friendships too, where there's jealousy, in which someone wants to be your best friend and not your second best friend. Ever had that? They hoover you or suck you away from other meaningful relationships that you might have. Then, of course, there's the drip. Okay, the drip. The person who just agrees with everything you say, which, of course, isn't good for anybody. To be surrounded by friends who dare to disagree with you when you are patently wrong about something. These are the wimps who don't want a fuss or any conflict, so they let your unreasonableness or evil go unchecked. If I speak out, he or she won't love me anymore. That's the wimp friend. Then, of course, there is the snowflake, the person who is very brittle and takes disagreement as a personal slight. You say something they don't agree with and they think that you aren't their friend anymore. And finally, but not least, there's what I call the office party friend, who is really a business associate that we just have to get on with or we lose money or contracts. And sometimes we can mistake professional cordiality for friendship. In fact, the world is full of people who only love on their own terms. Human love usually has an ulterior motive and is primarily about what can be reciprocated back to us and can be about what makes our image look good. We like to be seen as a good or popular person. And at any rate, as we said before, we tend to prefer to love those who love us. Loving our so-called enemies is something that we are not very good at, but it is kingdom love. Divine love is about Jesus loving and dying for those who crucified him. Something humans find very hard to understand. Yet loving your enemies is core to the Christian way of life. Period. So here's Jesus in the reading that Beth read, calling us to be his friends. Now the word phylos for friendship is used in the reading. That's the Greek word phylos, as in a friend your buddy, your mate. And this is unprecedented in the history of man and religion. At the time and for generations, God or the gods were seen as some sort of remote, distant powers who, out of fear, you gave your allegiance to in exchange for favours. If you give your allegiance to certain gods, then he'll give you favours back. 
and your house won't burn down, and things like that. The Greek and Roman gods were impersonal, like a lot of people's gods today. Or well, believe in God, people say, and when you tease them out a bit, it's a very impersonal God that people actually believe in. It's the same today. And worshipping these impersonal gods, again, was about obedience alone to these gods who could fall in or out with you like fair-weather friends. You've all seen Jason and the Argonauts, haven't you? It's, a lot of that goes on there. You were the gods' subject and not their friend. And your relationship with the gods was formal and abstract. And yet, God as Jesus is so totally different. He says he loves us all, using the word agape in that reading, meaning everybody, love for everybody, regardless of whether you approve of them or not. Jesus tells us we are not duos or slaves. He calls us to be his friends. And not only that, but in Jesus, God is pitching his tent amongst us. It's not a bear. He's pitching his tent amongst us. In the mess of this earth and in the middle of our own messes, Jesus is no friend who just perches at some distance on a cloud in the heavens, like the Roman and the Greek gods. Furthermore, here is a friend who died for us and would have done the same just for you, just for you, if you had been the only person in the universe. You see, to know love is to be in a relationship. If God is a loving God, then he seeks a relationship with each one of us. That's why he pitched his tent on earth amongst us. A distant, remote God is a God who isn't by definition loving. Yes, you can believe in remote Creator God who made the sea and the sunset. But to call God love is to mean that he must be desirous of a relationship or friendship with us. This is why Jesus' words this morning are so important. He's stating something about God's personality. Even the Trinity itself the three personhood of God points towards a relationship within himself. Just think of that. If God was not Trinitarian, then he'd just be a single entity which wouldn't know love because there was nobody for him to love even before the world and us were made. If God is love, he exists as a relationship within himself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Within the Trinity, there is the lover and the object of love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all reciprocating with each other. This is how we know that God, by definition, is love. Now, you might have to rewind that whole paragraph, <laughs> all right? Um, but in Jesus, we find a friend who supports us, encourages us, will reveal our faults to us, as a true friend should. And Jesus reveals how God loves us enough to lay down his life for us. The Lord is not a fair-weather friend, a gold digger. He's not a sycophant. He's not a puppet master. He's not a hoover who only wants you and nobody else. And nor is he a snowflake who gets easily upset by things that you tell him. 
And we're back to this important distinction, aren't we, between knowing about a God and actually knowing God. And although friends and family are part of God's design for us in this life, it's still the case that both of these, family and friends, will never completely fulfil your true needs. Family and friends are important. They're also fallible, since like us, their motives are mixed. You will always sense that there is something missing in life if you do not know Jesus. After all, he is the incarnation of God in human flesh, who died for you, and you died for your enemies as well. You may know all about God, church history, theology, priesthood, etc. But if you don't actually know him, instead of just knowing all about him, then there will always be a missing gap in your life. Even when people have good families, great friends, and a good income, they often say, don't they, there's something missing in my life, and I don't know what it is. As I said in Wednesday's video, we were actually made to worship God. We will never be truly happy until we grasp that. Until then, there will always be that lurking feeling that there is something missing in our life. We try to fill that gap, don't we, by throwing ourselves into all sorts of things in life, in a frenzy of activity, buzzing around like bees from one thing to another, all doing good. And yet Jesus simply wants us to abide in his love, to rest in his love, to enjoy his love. And of course, our walk with the Lord can be difficult, since he can often disagree with our way of looking at things. The world's full of people that think, think that God agrees with them on everything. It's often us who walks away from him because we don't want to face the, some thorny things about ourselves that he reveals to us. But he's doing it because he loves you and wants only the best for you. So there are times when we mustn't be snowflakes in the face of being seen for who we really are. Yes, I know, God isn't just a friend. We need a sense of healthy, transcendent mystery about our creator of the universe, don't we? I'm always suspicious of people who seem to always have God in their pocket and have a permanent hotline to him all the time. You know, the God almighty thing. But actually, even in good friendships, you don't hang around with each other all of the time every minute of the day, do you? There has to be some breathing space, or you can become overbearing to each other, and to everybody else, I have to say. Some people only ever talk about God. You try to talk about the news, or who won the cup, or something like that, and look at you blankly, I only talk about God, and God's thinking, oh, for goodness sake, even God finds them boring. <laughs> you know? The thing to grasp today, though, is that Jesus is like no other God, past or present. Other man-made gods are remote, distant entities who don't want our friendship. It's beneath them. They only want obedience and a master-slave relationship. But Jesus calls us into friendship with him, into intimacy, trust and fills that missing gap 
Deep inside there's that gap you cover up with lots of other things. Whether you're a churchgoer or you're watching this and you're not yet a churchgoer, deliberately ask Jesus into your life and heart. Mean it and see what happens. It'll be the best friendship that you ever have. Amen. Let's pray. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. We thank you that you love us more than we deserve, more than we can comprehend, and yet so often we struggle to love each other as you have loved us. We pray that you will help us to embody that love, to abide in your love, and to live out your command. Father, encircle your church with the love of the Gospel. Encircle us, Father. Encircle the world with your love. The love that breaks the restrictions of nationality, race and language. We hold before you the nations that are struggling and yet forgotten during this pandemic. We pray for the people of Afghanistan. Be with the families who are waiting anxiously to hear news of their daughters. This week we hold before you the work of Christian Aid. We pray that each of us will be nudged by the spirit of joyful and generous giving. Encircle us, Father. Encircle our homes, our schools, our care homes, and all who work and live in this town. We pray that as your Spirit draws us together to abide in your love as one body, so may our newly elected council be united as they work together to rebuild and strengthen this community post-Covid. May your presence infuse all our lives with hope and encouragement. Encircle us, Father. Encircle with your love all who are suffering in mind, body or soul. Protect the vulnerable and those who are struggling in these challenging times. There are so many who need to feel your healing touch right now. As we name them in the silence of our hearts, may the touch of Christ be for them wholeness and healing. Encircle with your love those whom we have named and those known to you alone. May your joy be complete within them. Encircle us, Father. Encircle the bereaved in your healing love. Hold in your embrace all who have died. And today we remember our sister in Christ, Daphne Miller. Encircle us, Father. Bring us through the waters of death to the joy of eternal life. Encircle our hearts with your love, that we may abide in you and keep the command you gave us to love one another as you have loved us. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.